Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18+. plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. It's time to talk Cougar football on Sports Radio 93.3 KJR FM. Our Wazoo Roundtable is brought to you by No Live Brew House, family owned No Live Brewed with History, Hops, and Heart, and by Guild Mortgage. If you're looking to purchase or refinance your home, reach out to Team Bruce at Guild Mortgage. By the Buffalo Gym, 10,000 square feet of in fitness in the heart of Maple Valley. By American Football Brands, celebrating all things that make football great. Now with Coog legends Alex Brink and M. Christo Bruce, here's our own Coog, who isn't a legend, Ian Furness. All right, with that, here we go. Time to talk Cougar football, our roundtable, our legends, MK, Alex, and Christo Bruce, Alex Brink, Coog sitting there. How about this? A four in one record. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Should, be five and Should be five and uh, zero. Oh, let's not relive that, man. Let's talk about the good things. Uh, beat California twenty eight to nine. Probably should have been fifty six to, to nine Goodness. when it was all said and done. But hey, a win is a win. Let me start with just uh, a quick little recap. So uh, the biggest thing coming out of that game was the return of the defense against the best rushing team in the Pac twelve coming in. Uh, just 31 net yards for uh, for Cal, but um, you know there's a lot to discuss, and, and then obviously look ahead because it's USC week as well, so it's huge. Uh, let's start with you, Alex. General thoughts after that win against Cal? Well, I thought you know in the end you get out of there, you get out of there with a W, you win at home. Yeah. I thought going in, you know that that tough loss against Oregon, and with the schedule coming up. I mean, that game was as must win as it could get, in my opinion, at this point in the season. And that, although you're probably a better football team than Cal, there's no easy outs in the Pac-12. Sure. And your, you know, so the fact that they were able to come in, defense played great, offense had its moments, but again, was a little up and down. And I talked to Cam Ward after the game, and he was very, uh, you know, he, he kind of laid it on himself, you know what I mean, which I thought was good. I think he recognizes the ability, his his need to protect the football, not try and make every big play happen. Um, so, I, you know, hopefully, again, he's kind of learned through these first five weeks heading into a, a tough stretch of games that, you know, are really make a break as far as where this season goes, um, you know, from the top end. Uh, MK, yeah. your guys on the other side of the football stepped up, didn't they? Man, I'm telling you right now, it's so exciting. You know, one thing we talked about, I mean, you were you were pretty nervous when we talked last week about this running game coming in with Cal. Yeah, and, yeah. And I mean, Jade Knott's a home run hitter, man. The dude, dropped, all, he does, all he does is pull a Rashad Penny and drop 75-yard yeah. touchdowns on you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, that's the very first thing you said is like, man, we're going to be tested. And, you know, and I was like, man, I love the way our defense runs sideline to sideline. And we are penetrating. We're leading uh, the pack as far as tackles for loss, sacks, and things like that, which always gives me goosebumps. That makes me excited. But to see these guys fly around, finally have time of possession equal on both sides, but be able to have them at, was it net 30-something yards? Like, that gets me excited about watching a football game all day. I, I think, what was the, what was it, Alex? I mean, let's just go on the defense. We'll talk about Cam in a second, look ahead to USC. But let me just, defensively, Difference between what happened the week before. Now, listen, Oregon and Cal are two different teams, but what was the yeah. biggest change or the biggest improvement, Alex? Yeah, I, I mean, I think to be fair, the you know the style of play of Cal was much different than Oregon in the sense that Oregon's very multiple, a lot of a lot of RPO, a lot of multiple options post snap that you have to account for. Whereas Cal was a little bit more like Wisconsin, more downhill yeah. in the box downhill. running. Um, you know that allows you to that frees you up you know, to focus really just on the back for the most part, right? And versus worrying about receivers and tight ends and motions and things like that. So, you know, I think in that sense, it was a good matchup. I think part of the difference for me also was, you know, the front four specifically, I thought played really well. You get, you get Christian Mejia back, right, from he had, you know, his wife had a baby last week. And I think that yeah. was a bigger, maybe a bigger piece of the puzzle than you thought it was um, in that when he can two-gap and take up space in the middle – it allows, you know, Henley and Malangoa and Travion yeah. Brown, 
right, to run through gaps and run sideline to sideline without having guys in their lap. So I thought the front four played better. And, you know, Brendan Jackson told me after the game, he's like, look, we, we challenged ourselves after that Oregon game that oh, we had I to get home that. On, the, on the quarterback. We had to be strong at the point of attack, and I thought they were. I love that, and I'll follow up on that too. One one great thing about having those front four, if you think about it, those front linemen they free up our linebackers, and you'll right. see our linebackers are fast, and they and they get through those gaps like Alex was saying. So to be able to have someone not come up and double team the linebacker is huge for us. So we're talking about running downhill. This complemented us a lot because when you're playing against an Oregon like Alex was saying, that RPO and things like that, you have to stand back. You have to be you have to be complacent with your gaps and things like that. You have to be sound. But now we're talking about smash mouth getting downhill and getting in the backfield uh, mk let me just uh, let me just kind of stare away from the kooks just for one second because i think it's a really everybody in our city right now is and probably rightfully so fretting about and stressing out about this the local nfl team's defense but what you said there and alex kind of made, made mention of it as well it, the defensive lineman's responsibility in football it, i think a lot of times we think of hey you know well you listen i mean you led the pac 10 in, in sacks but i mean your job isn't always to make a tackle. Your job nope. isn't always to to get to the quarterback or get a tackle for loss. It feels as if, and this is something the Seahawks, I think, are having a hard time with. You never see Jordan Brooks or or Cody Barton without a man or two on them second level. D lineman and Wazoo did a better job against a run you know run heavy team this week. D lineman's job is to make sure you almost, I guess, quote, protect those guys. Well, think about this, and Alex will uh, be able to talk to you about this too, but you think about the Legion of Boom, they wouldn't be the Legion of Boom without that front that they had, right? Because you think about it, they're getting to the quarterback so quick, you're not out there guarding somebody for 10 seconds, right? Yeah. They have a quick pass that comes out or a distress pass, makes the quarterback make a bad decision, that's where they get all those picks from. But that front, when they had that Legion of Boom, made all the difference in the world. Some depth there, Alex, up front. MK's talked about it this year, and you just talked about you get a key guy back as well. This is this is a different Wazoo team. Yeah, we can flush Oregon, but when you have depth in the front seven, boy, that's just – we've never had that. It feels like it's never been a, a luxury that Wazoo's had. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ian, how about, let me stop how about, you right there. How about, how about in the last 12 years? Okay, all right, I'll take right. that. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, honestly, I would say – and MK would probably agree, like, I, he was a year ahead of me, but those first two years I was at Washington State, you know, kind of 03, 04, you know, 02, 03, 04 at Dogs. the D line position, yeah. interior Dogs. defensive lineman, plus, you know, um, you know, Ike Brown and, and DD on the outside. Yeah. And, yeah. We had an Outland and, Trophy winner. And yeah. MK and Ryan Long. I mean, like, look, that was. But it's been a while, boys. That's it's, been deep. Even, and you think about the good D lines Washington State had yeah. kind of during the Mike Leach era. Yeah. You know, Hercules Matafa is a great player, but I mean, he wasn't, Him, you know, he yeah. wasn't the same, dude. <laughs> same type. Yeah. And he wasn't the same type of player right. from a size perspective as some of the guys that, that you know, the Coos have right now. Yeah. I just, it's, I, I don't know what it is. It's recruiting is hard. I, it's interesting with recruiting, right? Like in a day and age of, and Alex, you're involved with this. It's just, it's a bigger picture question, but in the day and age of seven on seven and such oh, yeah. a huge emphasis on skill. And you look at what happens in the off season. It's an emphasis on skill. I mean, as a father mm-hmm. of a lineman, I know like, like those guys, if you play receiver, DB, quarterback, running back, what have you, you're doing stuff all the time. All I, the, summer long. Linemen are just said, Hey, go in the, go in the weight room, do your thing, whatever. We'll see. Go you flip a tire. Right? Yeah. Go flip <laughs> a tire, man. But it's hard. It's like you got to find them big dudes and the big bodies. And, and, you know, now some of them, not all of them look like, uh, like our guy. His, his name isn't Hercules, but he sure looks like an MK there. I'm just <laughs> flipping a tire down there at the, but the, you remember the, the old Buffalo linemen gym. back in the day? <laughs> like the, the linemen back in the day, it was like get as big and as fat as you can. I mean, yeah. they're physical specimens nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you look at Brennan Jackson. I saw him the other day and I was like, who is this dude, right? Yeah. He's huge. Yeah, exactly. So. All right, let's do this. Take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, USC week. We'll also touch in on Cam Ward. Uh, Alex, I want you to go a little deeper on, you know, what's correctable and what's not. And I think what you said there, I think a lot of Wazoo fans can probably see and relate to. Maybe trying to do too much, make that big play, as opposed to just to doing the little thing. And, oh, by the way, uh, not since the days, I don't even know, was he, was he technically a tight end? Not since the days of our buddy Jed Collins. Have we seen a oh, tight end Jed. catch a touchdown, huh? How about that action? So, the old fullback <laughs> tight end combo. <laughs> exactly. We'll just call that an H-back. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a break, come back with more Cougar Legends on Sports Radio 93.3 KJRFM. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With 
over 80 casino style games to choose from, you too could win life changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to chumbacasino.com and give them a world. That's chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary, void, or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. With Alex and MK, MK, tell me about a mortgage. Where can I go? And TeamBruceMortgage.com. Tell you right now, if you're looking for uh, any kind of purchase, refinance, anything to do with uh, uh, real estate, come on over. Talk to Team Bruce. We're here for you, baby. It's still 70 degrees outside, but you know what? Holidays are coming up. Why would you wait? You got a football fan in your family? Maybe you want to get them outfitted for the fall. Where do you go, Alex? Yeah, check out AmericanFootballBrand.com. Off-field football apparel, football-inspired. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, uh, AmericanFootball.com, uh, AmericanFootballBrand.com makes for, a, a, like you said, a great holiday gift item. I want to uh, I, w- I want to make big shout out as well to our good friends at uh, No Live Brewing, No Live Brew House out there in Spokane, Spokane, Vegas, Washington, on the uh, on the Spokane River, right in the shadow of the WSU Medical Center, and of course, Ooh, I had a big and juicy. Oh, I had did a big you? And juicy last week when I was in uh, when I was in Pullman. Matter of fact, so shout out to No Lie. That's a that was a tasty beverage. Uh, it probably tasted even better after uh, after a twenty eight nine victory. victory. Yeah, yeah. it tasted yeah. even better. They got all kind. They got the uh, sell, they got everything you want there at uh, at No Lie. Uh, great beers and John and Cindy Bryant, huge supporters. Uh, look for it in your local grocery store here on the west side. And if you're on the east side, make sure you swing by the brew house. All right. Alex, uh, good news, bad news last week. Good news, defense was great. Uh, good news, even better news, you win. You're four and one heading into the USC game. But uh, I, I guess I'm looking at the ratio of, of touchdowns to interceptions. It's just, it's not what you want it to be for Cam Ward. He's thrown five in the last three games. What does he need to do different? What are you seeing? Your, what are your quarterback eyes tell you? I know you talked to him after the game. Yeah, I did. You know, and I talked to him after the game. And again, he was, you know, he, he knew it. Like he owned it, but as, you know, as a good quarterbacks do and good leaders do. Um, you know, we're talking about the first interception. So when you think about some of these, the way Eric Morris likes to call plays and the way the setup of things, right, they like to they like to go fast sometimes, right? And typically it's go fast after multiple first downs or go fast after big plays. And then lots of times they're going fast to get on the ball and trying to run some sort of like double move or set up some a, a kind of a shot play downfield. Well, what happens as a quarterback, right, you have to understand the situations. If I get a big first down on the opponent's side of the field and coach calls, you know, hurry up and it's a fake screen and go, I got to know that, hey, if that's not there, first down, I got to check it down, right? So the problem is as a player, you get going, you're amped up, you want to make a big play, and so you, yeah. you kind of – you miss some things. And his, and his point, right, he missed safety rotation – and he saw this one safety rotate down, and, and as he told me after the game, I should know that that other safety is coming across. And just in that moment, right, in that moment, you get caught up in it and you let it go. And so I think for, for Cam, it's a little bit of as the game gets going and you want to make a big play, just making sure you stay kind of – that's why as quarterbacks, we always talk about being even keeled, right? And so a lot of that's correctable via film study, recognition, getting the reps, frankly, you know, you make that mistake once, you're probably not making it again, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's one of those things. Now, the second interception, I think it's really interesting because you'll say, man, that, you know, bad throw ends up being a pick. But that's also the flip side of that is he can make that play. That's a makeable play. He can make that throw in the back corner of the end zone. That probably is a touchdown and he just missed it. And so you have to balance the good with the bad in some of these things. He makes a lot of really, really yeah, uh, plus minus. good plays yep. off of scrambles and off of broken plays. And look, he missed one, you know, he could, he, you know, he, he should probably try and make that throw again because I think he can make that throw. And in a big situation, you know, maybe down in the Coliseum at SC, maybe he makes it and it's the difference, right? And so you gotta, you gotta balance those things. And, but as a player, you gotta know when's the time. You got to know yeah. what the situation is, and that's when it kind of all ties together. Can I say one thing? So one thing I was talking about, too, was when we first started, I, I, I'll i be the first one to admit, I wasn't a huge campaign. I'm like, I don't know exactly you know, what they see in this kid, bring him from just kind of a little podunk school and whatnot. And we talked about this on the show, but each game that goes on, not only does he do better, but I feel like the offense opens up a little bit. I think Alex talked a little bit about the game plan. You have a young quarterback you bring in. Do you open up the whole offense or do you kind of move him in like, you know, piece by piece and and incorporate things in? So like you were saying, he does force the ball sometimes, but to have somebody roll out, throw with his opposite arm, 
throw a spiral to the end zone. Granted, we have a younger guy that drops the ball, but that was probably one of the most athletic plays that I've seen in college football. Um, so you're seeing these intangibles that he's doing. And from what I hear, I guess he can throw the ball extremely far too. So Alex, I mean, explain that a little bit. Yeah. Well, and I'll add one last little anecdote for, again, about the plus minus side. The touchdown to Renard, to Renard Bell down the right-hand side was a run play with a tag option to throw the vertical down the sideline. He made an incredible throw off of a fake, uh, flipping his hips, throwing that ball vertical down the and a, field, and, a read. On, and that would have been a read too on his part, right? Did you yeah, and he would have yeah. read. He read yeah. it. He read yeah. it and saw it. So again, he could have handed that ball off and moved on to second down, right? And it would yeah. probably be a tackle for a minimal gain. He sees the opportunity to take a shot, and he takes the shot and he hits it. Right? That's that's the the plus side of his ability because right. a lot of quarterbacks first can't make that throw, and secondly can't diagnose it to to decide to make the throw in that moment. But that second, that second interception, I mean, that was just like, we're just keeping the play alive. I mean, you probably could have ran for five, six yards, kind of rechecked it down or whatever. But that's just, that comes with experience too, like you were saying, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and those are, and those are mistakes you better not make this week. 23 players from Southern California, MK, uh, are on the Wazoo roster. You've played the USC. You know what it's like. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, gosh. You know, I have uh, nightmares what, about that. What is, what is this game? What, what, I mean, listen, they're still, they haven't been what they were. And when you guys were playing them, they were at their their pinnacle, right? I mean, they were really they were cranking it up. It was a it, they were an NFL team. That was yeah. probably one of the best teams of, in history. Yeah, they mm-hmm. were they were incredible. But they're still USC. What does it mean when you go down there and you're playing in that yeah. building? What's it like? A lot of prestige in the Coliseum. I mean, you have you know celebrities on the sideline. You know, you have a packed house. You get on there. It's warm. It's hot. Um, but like you were saying, most of the players on our team are typically from California. So when you go down there, it's, it's really a homecoming. So you do have some distractions. It's like you get to play in front of your family, your friends, you know, you get them tickets to the game, you go out there and you want to show out in front of them. So I think that's for a lot of the California guys, that's kind of their Apple cup or, or their Super Bowl, right? You go back there and get to play uh, against uh, or in front of your home fans. And probably a lot of the people you played against are at USC, right? Alex, what's uh, what's the key to the game this week? I mean, there, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot when you dive into it. Obviously, SC is a really uh, talented football team. Um, they've got all the they've got all the high price transfers. They got all yeah. you know all the high price coaches, all the things, right? Um, and they're good. They're talented. But you can also see over the last couple of weeks that it's not a co- cohesive group yet. Um, and you know, they're kind of living and dying by their, the pure ability. Uh, and, and so I, I'm intrigued to see, you know, can they can sustain that for three weeks from a USC perspective? Cause they're kind of living on that night's edge. The offense doesn't look super consistent all the time. The defense makes, you know, big interceptions or big plays, you know, to kind of stymie an offense. And, and I think for Washington state, if you go out and play good stout defense and make them go the length of the field to score, don't give up big plays, tackle in space, they're going to make mistakes at some point, yeah. right? And your D-line can get – this is their offensive line is not as good as Oregon's offensive line, so you're going to have chances to get home. Yeah. And then that Washington State offense, kind of like you alluded to, Ian, you got to protect the football. You can't yeah. shoot yourself in the foot. They've, they're, it's a classic Alex Grinch defense. They've lived and died by – uh, by bend but don't break, and then make a big interception. You know yep. when the time presents itself, and they've done it over and over again. And as long as you don't do that, um, you know you give yourself a chance to win down there in the Coliseum. When's the last time we won in the in in the Coliseum? Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, Drew Dunning? Uh, no, that was at home. <laughs> no, Drew Dunning was at home. Last two trips to the Coliseum. Uh, well, it was three trips ago. So uh, one thing, one thing I would say, one thing I would say when we go down there, we two thousand thirteen. 2013. Okay. To but we've question. proven we can beat a Wisconsin. We've proven we can go toe to toe and beat an Oregon. Yep. I feel like the, this team right here has the confidence to go in there and beat that USC team and put a mark on it. I agree. No, I totally agree. Listen, fellas, it's going to be fun. Let's talk about a win next week. That'd be a good time, huh? Uh, they've already hey, already got one. They're not going to get Lincoln Riley fired, but they already got one coach fired at a Power Five school in uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Paul Chris. So let's, let's keep going. Um, and we didn't get to, you know, unfortunately, Colorado didn't see Wazoo early enough either, uh, or Arizona State. Okay, fellas, have a, uh, Alex, have a great call. Go sell some merchandise. Uh, MK, you got a couple mortgages to, fi- to finalize. Get that stuff done. We'll talk to you next week, fellas. All right? Go Cougs. Go Cougs, baby. Thank you, guys. Cougs. Go Cougs. That's uh, Alex and MK. We'll take a break. Come back with more 93.3 KJRFM.
Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner.